Good afternoon. This is Howard Wade, Code Green with Think Tech Hawaii. We have as our guest today somebody who will be very familiar to many of you. If you read midweek newspaper, you will see this smiling face here. This is David Chang. And one, he's got so many other credentials. We'll just have, we'll spend half the uh, program just talking about his credentials. But he does this weekly article, and under this is under the auspices of Art of Thinking. He's the CEO of that. He is also the CEO of Wealth Bridge Hawaii, and Lord knows what else. We can go into that a little bit later. Since this is a program on energy efficiency, he's got his fingers into all kinds of energy efficient pies and something very unique that we'll talk about uh, later. But first and foremost, David Chang. Chang is Chinese. No, turns out <laughs> Chang is uh, Hawaiian. How, how did that happen? Well, well thanks, uh, Howard, for having me on the show. Really do appreciate it. Excited uh, to be a part of uh, what, you, what you're doing for the state you know, the green energy initiatives that we have, I think, is very important. Going back to your first question, uh, Chang, there are some Korean Changs out there. Not mm -hmm. many of us, but not many people know that when people from Asia immigrated to the United States, the last names were dictated by immigration people who would just say, hey, l w w say your name, and they would t sound it out and just wrote whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So, for example, for China, you know, we have Chow, C-H-O-W. We mm -hmm. have Zhou, Z-H-O-U. They have the same Chinese character. Mm -hmm. But it depends on, did you immigrate from Taiwan, Hong Kong, mainland China, and in what year? So my parents or my father immigrated uh, in the, well, the great uncle first, sorry, uncle first in the uh, 60s, and my father immigrated in the 70s. And so it just Chang became part of it because when you look at the Chinese character and the Korean, eh, it sounded like Chang, so that's what it was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the best local example of that is uh, Carol's Bijou. Yes. It sounds extremely French, right? but his Chinese name is... It is Chow, Chow, but E-J-O-U, yeah. because mm -hmm. uh, his great-grandfather, <laughs> grandfather worked uh, in China for a French person mm -hmm. in the factory. So the French person says, Cho, oh, it sounds like Bijou, that's what I'm going to name you. Mm -hmm. And the name is mm -hmm. Suck. Yep. <laughs> Well, in any case, you have certainly made good in your your born country, America. Mm -hmm. So before we get into nitty gritty, I know that you do art of thinking and art you thinking write this article, correct, right, art, art of uh, smart thinking, and then you do wealth bridge you into financial management, yeah, uh, financial planning, uh, the wealth management firm. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been doing that for quite some time now, primary bread and butter. But I, I would say. I, more of an entrepreneurial spirit, which is mm -hmm, why mm -hmm. I ventured into green energy, real estate development, some import-export, but primarily mm -hmm. has been wealth management, Art of Thinking Smart. I have a blog, artofthinkingsmart.com, where I give a lot of financial free advice, and I think mm -hmm, that's important mm -hmm. that we all make smarter financial decisions. I believe that the 2008 crisis, it's easy to you know, pinpoint, oh, it's this person's fault, it's Wall Street or this bank, but when you really look at it, I think everybody just got caught up in the moment. Everybody tried to keep up with the Joneses, and then the bubble was about to burst. Mm -hmm. So I really do give away all of my financial advice for free because I think that if people make smart financial decisions, the community becomes stronger, as well as our country, state, you know, the world. So I think it's very important that we really take the time to make good decisions. Yeah, we, we are the only large country or a developed country making real, real progress. Mm. E Europe is in stagnation. Right. Japan is in stagnation. Right. Yeah. yeah, America is doing well, you know, yeah. financially. You know, I study the in uh, economy, uh, but we're still not completely healthy, and, mm -hmm. and our debt is very looming. And if you broke down our seventeen, eighteen trillion dollar debt yeah. per taxpayer, it costs one hundred eighty thousand dollars per person. I don't know about you, Howard. If you mm -hmm. can just write a check for one hundred eighty thousand yeah. to the government, yeah. 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 and this mm -hmm. does include state debt that many mm -hmm. states have or local. So I think that we're going to have to really come to uh, you know, a situation where either taxes go up or benefits go down or a combination thereof. Mm -hmm. uh, I truly believe, though, that the best way to get out of that is to grow our economy so much 
that the extra tax revenues generated from the growth of our companies, entrepreneurs, small mm -hmm. businesses, are enough to really wipe away a lot of the debt that we have, mm -hmm. and at the same time still maintain uh, the, the important benefits that we give our citizens, you know, I graduated from West Point in the military, mm. still in the Guard, so, you know, you know, my education was paid by the taxpayer, so I think it's very important that we do have uh, um, the, the services that our government provides. But part of that, I think, and, you know, and we're talking about green energy, mm -hmm. I think green energy is very important uh, for development to really, you know, have America be the uh, forefront, you know, the, the frontier of, of economic development. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> and before I get, we get into mm -hmm. the correlation between energy efficiency and economic growth, right. I should mention that was about a year ago, I went to St. Andrew's Cathedral one evening and entered, and here was David in his full <laughs> army military dress. Yeah. Looked absolutely magnificent, complete with sword, and he was surrounded by other West Pointers in full military dress. Just right. one of the many, 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 many things. <laughs> yeah. They got married, and, and my wife, mm -hmm. very proud of her, she's a state representative, mm -hmm. and we're in the middle of campaign season right now. Fifteen days left. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people are actually <laughs> waiting for those 15 days to be over so we could stop at the mailers and commercials and go back to our mm -hmm. daily and, lives. And the, and the <laughs> waving, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the sign waving too, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so... South Korea, would you describe it as a first world country now or an almost first world yeah, country? And, it's and been rising so rapidly. It is. It's, uh, and yeah, if yeah. you think about it, in 1953, uh, after the Korean War, mm -hmm. the per capita, it was one of the poorest countries in the world. And now it has, I think, the 11th uh, largest yeah, economy. Yeah. And a few years ago, Korea, South Korea became the seventh country in the world to join the 2050 Club. And mm -hmm. the 2050 Club are countries that have a per capita of $20,000 per person mm -hmm. and 50 million people. So you have, a lot of, you have a lot of countries that have 50 million or more, but they're mm -hmm. poor, and a lot of countries that have 20,000 per capita, but they don't have 50 million people. Mm -hmm. And so South Korea was the seventh, and uh, Japan was the first, 1987. Mm -hmm. The United States joined in 88, and we have Great Britain, Germany, France, Italy, and South Korea is the last country to hit. And so, in my opinion, I believe it is a first world country. Mm -hmm. Economically speaking, or at least investment-wise, we still consider it a developing country because it's still emerging markets, which is fascinating because Samsung is such a huge company. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I traveled to South Korea quite a bit, and it's so fascinating to see because North Korea and South Korea are so mm -hmm. split, and it's mm -hmm. very unfortunate what's going on in the North. South Korea, in the landmass, is the size of Kentucky. Right, and you have 50 million people living in South Korea. In Kentucky, you only have about 4.5 million, mm -hmm. so you know almost 10 times more. And what's even more fascinating is South Korea. 70 percent of it is mountainous, mm -hmm. meaning 70 percent of it people can't live mm -hmm. or grow, you know, agriculture or anything like that. So you got 30 percent of a very very small mass like Kentucky with 50 million people. So if you go there, you know they have to grow up. But also, what it forces them to do is really think outside the box when it comes to sustainable living. Mm -hmm. For in America, we're very spoiled. You, uh, you know, one thing I, I uh, was looking at, uh, in, in especially in Hawaii, is what they call plasma arc, or our technology mm -hmm. where it's, you know, burning waste. We have our boilers and everything like that. But it's actually cheaper to still ship our waste to the mainland because land is so, you know, abundant that, you know, for a few dollars a square foot or whatever ton, you, you can go ahead and dispose of it. But when you think of Korea, they don't have mm -hmm. that land. So they had to figure out ways of how can we get rid of our waste while at the same time save money and, and save the space that we don't have. So in 1995, the municipal waste, about 70, 80 to 90% of it was actually going to the wastelands. And now, almost reversal, mm -hmm. they're recycling their waste. So it's very fascinating to see that in 15 years, 20 years, where they have come from uh, when it comes to the green technology and innovation. Yeah, a, Hawaii is one of the few states that can even vaguely emulate that. Mm. Because uh, many years ago, in this same capacity, in the state energy office, I was instrumental in converging the Recycling Association of Hawaii, and at that point, that was 1987, we recycled 7% mm. of our waste. Right. 
we have turned that on its head now. We're well over 70%. Right, which is great. And one big reason for that is H-Power, mm. our garbage to energy right. facility. And we recently added, I believe it was 38 megawatts to garbage to energy. But we're recycling so well, we can't bring that mm. up to full capacity. Mm -hmm. We need more waste. Right, right, right. Not, not that I want right, to generate right, that. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the thing yeah. is, you know, H-Power is the boiler, so it, it, it produces energy, which is great. But the next step, what Korea has developed is mm -hmm. the plasma arc is uh, the next generation mm -hmm. H-Power, where they are able to heat up the waste so much that the the you know when you look at the uh, the metric or the, what is it the scientific table mm -hmm. you know carbon and oxygen nitrogen are actually one of the you know the, the if you lowest common denominator when it comes mm -hmm. to you know matter and they're able to you know get so hot that any type of waste will become nitrogen oxygen carbon mm -hmm. and the uh, actually it's just nitrogen uh, oxygen I think and what's left over is called slag mm -hmm. and it looks like this black glass that yeah. you could actually yeah. use it's really cool in that sense. Where RH power, we do boil it, you get a sludge, mm -hmm. so there is still some you know, negative uh, outcome of it, and that sludge is being moved over, and people don't want that. So I hope that the next stage Hawaii can get to is to use, and we had, I think, a plasma art. At the time, it was very expensive, mm -hmm. so it didn't make financial sense, but the technology that Korea has is, is they reduce the cost tremendously. So I think it's something that the state and city should look into. Yeah, yeah, we were looking at a facility out in Lua Lua Lake mm. on the Waianae Coast. They thought they were going to get it going. I don't know that they really got it going. Mm -hmm. But uh, H power reduces its waste by a factor of 10. Right. You start up with 10 pounds or one, 10 cubic feet, you're reduced to one cubic foot. With pl our plasma, I believe it's more like a ratio of 100 to 1. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So in, the, in the waste, the, the, the slag, you could, it's like glass. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's non-toxic because right. it's so solid. Right, so exactly. You could, you could do something. Right, like right. That. Yeah, yeah. So what else is South Korea doing in the way of uh, energy efficiency? Right, so they've done these plans, five-year plans. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had this green energy plan to grow in. Again, because of scarcity they were forced to to do so and a lot of just smart communities that's you know mm -hmm. just going there on a frequent basis the smart communities are for us you know i live in milani malka and i work in town mm -hmm. the traffic mm -hmm. is horrendous you know 45 minutes each way in south korea you know seoul 15 million people you know in a small area uh, but the they've been able to really utilize, you live, work, sleep, you know, eat in you know, the same area mm -hmm. to reduce mm -hmm. you know, uh, transportation. Uh, you still have to go from place to place. You know, they're not completely there, but in other cities, they're actually developing entire uh, you know, metropolitan areas that are gonna be completely green where it's independent, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. the food that they grow, you know, mm -hmm. here, you know we, we even have it here, you grow it on the roof. So it lowers the heat that the building has mm -hmm. because it soaks up all the sun. Um, the way the AC works, the LED lighting that they have, and they've mm -hmm. mandated that every building have LED lights. And, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about it, where LED Absolutely. lights save a tremendous amount relative to the you know, CFLs and the halogen lights that we have. And, and Korea, uh, they, they, it was interesting. For us, we still, and I think a heavy reason we do recycle our aluminum and everything is... Uh, uh, we get the five cents, right? It's just yeah. one of those things. Yeah. But Korea, they, they don't pay money, but it's bred into their, mm -hmm. you know, mindset. And I think that's what it is. Yeah. It's a mindset change mm -hmm. where, you know, I remember I threw, you know, a can in the wrong garbage can because they have it split into mm -hmm. different areas. And they were, people were yelling at me, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Because in the United States, we throw everything into one bin. Yeah. Right? And we may want to recycle, but we'll kind of just, if, if we want to. But there, it's, it's, you know, there, mm -hmm. I think it's very good. It's Absolutely. the mindset is that when you dump the trash, you know, when I, when I go there, I stay with my uncle, and when they do it, you do it yourself. You put it into the different areas. Mm -hmm. Paper goes here, magazines in one, cans, glass in one. And it's something that you do, and then when you go, uh, when the trash people pick it up, it's already split up. Yep. But for us, we throw it into one, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I know that, they, uh, we do have facilities where they separate. 
Yep. Right? And so it's kind of one of those things like, why, why should I do it? Because they're going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. But in Korea, they, they've had that mindset change, which I think is, is very good. Yep. And, and, and I think, yeah, go we, ahead. We do have to take a break. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Yep. Sure. But we will continue very shortly. Thank you. Ted Ralston, folks, host of our show at St. Tech Hawaii called Where the Road Leads, where we talk about technology influencing the future of Hawaii. Technology, of course, is the art of solving problems. We always bring in interesting and informed guests who can see from different perspectives and different points of view how that future might unfold and how technology can assist us in getting there. So once again, join us 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Fridays. Uh, Ted Ralston, your host. And please, if you have ideas that you'd like us to address on this show or folks who you think should be on it, let us know. Hello again, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. I'm here with David Chang, CEO of the Art of Thinking, Wealth Bridge, West Point graduate. We go on. Oh, something else I didn't remem uh, remember to say former head of the Republican Party. Uh, we could spend all day just, <laughs> just giving his uh, credentials here. But we are talking about how South Korea is an incredibly efficient society, and they are rapidly approaching a first world standard of living. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a direct correlation. The better you use your materials, the more energy efficient you are, the more prosperous you're going to be. And I think one reason that America is doing well is because we were very energy wasteful. We're becoming more and more and more conscious mm. of the need for waste or need for energy independence. And of course, we have our, our fracking. Mm. I think that's all contributing to the growth of the American economy. So we were just beginning to talk about LED lights and something that I've been working on and many other people have been the conversion of the city street lights and the state street lights to LEDs. Mm. And it is happening on both fronts now. Big reason for it for that, aside from the fact that the LED street lights only use about 50% as much energy as the old lights, and they provide much better quality light, is the fact that we have on top of Mauna Kea some of the finest observatories in the world they like dark skies. They don't like light pollution. And we're beginning to deliver that. And that's going to contribute to our prosperity, too. So in Korea, I think you said that all new buildings must use right. LED. And then outdoor lighting also? LED. Right, outdoor lighting. Yeah. Uh, the, in, in, in the United States, we have our lead, the mm -hmm. leadership in engineering mm -hmm. design. And Korea has their version. And as I mentioned before, a lot of it is uh, even Japan. In, in Korea, you know, they. They're, they're very efficient because of the scarcity, but they admit that they have a lot to go. Mm -hmm. In some ways, we're more advanced. In some ways, they are. And Korea now is even helping other countries uh, become more energy efficient, too, which is great. And looking at, you know, we're talking about LED lights. <clears throat> One of the things that they even talked about is, and I was fascinated by sensors, where in parking garages, mm -hmm. for example, they have sensors now where the more people you have, the lighter it gets because mm -hmm. you need more light. But when there's less people there, it's not as bright. So there's a lot of that type of technology that they're bringing in. Mm -hmm. and, and the ultimate goal is, you know, is we're, instead of taking more energy, we're able to put more back in uh, so that we become more efficient and innovative. And, and you mentioned how economies grow when we become mm -hmm. more innovative in that sense. And so I think that... Uh, Samsung has a lot to do with you know, there being uh, such a huge part of their economy. Mm -hmm. And they realize, if you study Samsung's history, they, they were kind of a no-name company. People really didn't take them seriously. The big kids on the block were U.S. companies and Japanese companies. And, and they realized we have to be innovative. We just cannot do the same thing that other companies are doing. And so they really got into the semiconductor business, and the rest is history. Right? Mm -hmm. Samsung phones are now one of the most popular in the world, which is great. Yeah. And speaking of sensors, uh, I'm also the energy codes guy for the state. And the most recent energy code is just sensors, sensors, sensors mm -hmm. for lights. And there's a direct interchange there where, with fluorescent lights, if you turn them on and off, too often they degrade and they die. 
LEDs could care less yeah. how many times you turn them on and off. So I was recently, I flew back here, and we walked into the uh, airport parking lot to get the car. It was nighttime, and we had some fair light up above us, and we walk a few feet, whoop, here comes on another light. Mm. We walk a few more feet, whoop, here comes another light. I look back, the lights behind us were going off. Right. That is the ultimate in energy efficiency. Right, yeah, and, and I'm sure that... Because uh, we waste a lot of energy, and, you know, a lot yeah. of lights on when you don't need it. Yeah. And I think that's very important. And, and, and just a few weeks ago, uh, the Nobel Peace or Nobel Prize, mm -hmm. one of them was mm -hmm. given to uh, the inventors of LED lights. Mm -hmm. And I think for your audience, uh, just so they know, LED stands for light emitting diode. Good point. Good point. Uh, yeah. And in, I guess there's three generations of light: the halogen, and 90% of it is heat. Only 10% mm -hmm. is the light that Thomas Edison invented. And then we have the CFLs, which are great. But the LEDs, the, what they found was it's a semiconductor, and semiconductors theoretically for life can go in existence. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need to ever exchange it or anything like that the way that uh, the semiconductors are built. But the problem that they had was you had to get a pure blue light in order for it to get the different shades of light that we need. Mm -hmm. And they finally, the, I think the three Japanese, um, one is based in California, I think two in Japan, mm -hmm. um, and, and that develop now that blue light, mm -hmm. and all they do is they put a, a phosphor over that blue light. And LEDs after 10 years do have to re be replaced, but it's primarily for the phosphor, uh, which, which is you know this material they put over that blue light to get it mm -hmm. to different color temperatures. And so that's, gr that, that's why it can go forever. It, it saves tremendous amounts. And I think one mm -hmm. example, when you have you know, department stores, they have what's called a PAR 38 light. Mm -hmm. It's one of those that shine, like on jewelry counters. And for 75 watts, an LED at 10, 11 watts will mm -hmm. give you the same brightness, mm -hmm. last much longer. So you're saving almost 80, 90% in electricity costs because you went from 75 down to a 10, 11, and you're getting the same type, and they last significantly longer. I think now that's 50,000 hours mm -hmm. versus, mm -hmm. you know, 5,000 hours at the most. So that's ten, maintenance saves you yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and does it generate heat, too? That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those big places use less AC as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think LEDs are fascinating. And I'm curious to know what the next generation will be over time. Yeah, yeah. I, I read LED uh, newsletters. There's something, at least three different LED magazines and newsletters, and I'm probably missing some. Mm -hmm. it, it's just such a hot, hot, hot topic. Right. You heard it from me first. Ten years from now, the little kids growing up today won't know that there was any other type of light right. like LEDs. Right. They're and coming on like gangbusters. Yeah, and I hope, right, rapidly. right. Yeah. But uh, in Hawaii, tends to move slow at times, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that they, mm -hmm. it's low for hanging fruit. That is something you can exchange out immediately. The return on investment is less than a year, mm -hmm. especially if your lights are on 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, so that's what, and, 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 and one thing about the LEDs, and we talked about this too, is well, they have a called a color rendering index, mm -hmm. CRI. It's how similar is it to regular light. And, you know, the, the lights that are most common, the high um, uh, phosphate, uh, mm -hmm. uh, right, um, HPS. HPS, right? yep. And it, it's very difficult because it has that orange. So if you see somebody doing something naughty and mm -hmm. you can't tell if it's a red, purple shirt, it's very difficult to describe. Mm -hmm. Whereas an LED, you could see mm -hmm. exactly what they were wearing, how, how it was. So uh, it, it's good for security and safety reasons as well. Yeah, one of the first cities that converted to LEDs, 141,000 street lights. Mm. They started with South LA, which is the roughest, toughest neighborhood. And the police there actually have helicopters. Mm. And the police just love that conversion because of the better color rendition right. index. You can tell exactly what color shirt, color pants, whatever. And they found it much easier to track the progress of the bad guys mm -hmm. because they could really see them under the LEDs right. now. Just another benefit. Right. And then you mentioned maintenance. A uh, few mayors ago, they traded in the incandescent or halogen uh, street lights or uh, stop stop lights for LEDs and they used to have three crews that did nothing but go from one traffic signal to the next mm -hmm. to the next to the next changing out right. these halogen lamps with them which have short lives put in the LEDs and the crews 
we're now free to do other things. Mm, right. Just a, Save me money. Yeah. Right. And it's it's a co question of economy again. Now these other guys can be doing other useful things. Mm. Yeah. So in terms of LEDs from Korea, I know that you have a little special project right. that so you have brought in. Uh, part of it's LED, but it's a technology mm -hmm. uh, for storage. Uh, or, you know, some people call it the ESS uh, type of storage. Where it, right now our technology. If you want to store energy from a solar panel, is we have to use a battery. Mm -hmm. and, and if you think about it, a battery technology hasn't changed much the yeah. past 100 years. Yeah. And it's going to be very difficult that we see. I know Tesla, Elon Musk is doing a great job of advancing, but, but it, it has its limitations. One of the things that we know that there is something called a capacitor, and most mm -hmm. lights mm -hmm. have a capacitor. And we've known the past 100 years, capacitors are very, very good at getting charged up very quickly, but unfortunately, capacitors don't hold the charge. So mm -hmm. as soon as you charge up a capacitor, it's out. So it's not feasible for it to be used as a battery. Yeah, they're, they're just a pass-through. Exactly, just yeah. a pass-through. Yeah. And so these Koreans actually developed and said, you know what, capacitors, but the way it's built, if we could alter uh, through programs, processes, and able to convert it to be like a battery, it's going to be less uh, wasteful for the environment because batteries have to be disposed of in a certain way mm -hmm. because of the hazardous materials. Capacitors don't have that issue. Capacitors last a lot longer. It's very similar to an LED over CFL mm -hmm. or incandescent. Mm -hmm. and, and so they developed in 2013, and, and the uh, inventor uh, the, has been working on this for a decade or so. Finally got the patent done last year, uh, won a couple of awards, where you're able to take capacitors and he was able to, the patented uh, technology, a process, a software that he was able to put in mm -hmm. and use that as a battery. So what is the difference? Well, uh, a per a battery, it, it has a 500,000 up and down cycle, where a typical nickel battery, let's just say, is maybe only a few thousand times. Mm -hmm. And a regular battery, if it's too hot or too cold, doesn't charge, whereas a capacitor can. Mm -hmm. uh, that, those are just some of the better benefits that these capacitors have. Uh, right now the application is just for street lights and in Korea they're selling it for you know those exit sign lights mm -hmm. where power goes out how do you get out of a building those exit mm -hmm. signs so they've used it for that and and I'm working we brought a pilot light in to Hawaii it's the first one outside of Korea or in North America it's gonna be up at Waimea Valley so we just got here uh, about a month ago and we're looking at groundbreaking uh, earlier next year um, to kind of uh, you know, we got to dig it up, and, and, and I think Waimea is a great place, North Shore, uh, where electricity, again, uh, is, is badly needed in that sense. And they could take advantage of it, especially if you go to Waimea, the streets that they have. And, and we're going to put it kind of in the opening as soon as you get in, so there is that uh, uh, where they have access to solar. So very excited about this new te technology, and this is just kind of one of the uh, advances that we do stuff like this really grows our economy uh, and we're able to efficiently use less waste that's a big thing too mm -hmm. and in Hawaii I mean people know 90 percent of our energy comes from fossil fuels mm -hmm. right? it's six billion dollars that we're exporting where we're taking cash out of our pockets mm -hmm. and, and sending them to in many cases countries that are not very friendly to us I know you've mentioned that before so I think for us to be self-sustainable when it comes to our own um, energy having that $6 billion, as much of that stay in, very, very healthy for our economy. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify, this new import, you're going to have PV panels, PV panels. on top, and they're going to be feeding into LED lights. And you say, wow, that's probably not a very big PV panel. How can it power a street light? Mm. And the answer is, again, you can downsize your wattage mm. so exactly. greatly with LEDs. And then also LEDs are very aimable. With your current orange street lights, right. the light goes all over the place. Right. LEDs, you can get it down to a narrow beam spread, a wide beam spread, anything you want. So in this case, we're going to be doing something very, very special with that light right at the entrance to Waimea Valley Park. What, what is that, something special? Yeah, no, well, we're going to install it. very excited about that. Mm -hmm. And one thing uh, on the LED technology, too, is we've had problems in Hawaii with copper thieves. 
Mm -hmm. And copper mm -hmm. is valuable, so we, all the street lights are connected by copper, so they'll go in, they'll steal tons of it, and it's so expensive for us. But LEDs, because it requires less electricity, in some cases you only need aluminum. You don't need copper, which is great. Ooh, wow. On that cheery note, let's take another break. Obviously, we're going to spill over all over the place. See you in a minute. Aloha. Hello. My name is Hong Jiang, and I host ThinkTech Asia every Tuesday afternoon at 4 p.m. At our show, we talk about issues that are important in Asia, such as the environment, culture, history, religion. We broadcast live, and we're also on Alalo 54. Make sure to tune in, and we'll see you there. Thank you. Goodbye. Good afternoon again. Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. My guest is the very honorable David Chang, with too many titles for even me to begin to mention. And we are talking about an exciting new lighting technology coming in from South Korea. You've got your, this is a street light, you've got your PV panels on top, you've got your LED lights, and you are storing that energy that you produce during the day and need at night, not in a conventional battery, but in a capacitor. Mm. Right, so, so yeah, you, you have a solar panel, and, and normally from a solar panel you go to the converter because you have that 240, 110, mm -hmm. you know, how we do things in, in the United States. And then it goes from the solar panel to the converter to the light, and also some of it going to the battery. Mm -hmm. And then at night, there's no well, you know, sun, so the battery has it, and then uh, you're charging that light. So mm -hmm. in a perfect world, you never need to draw electricity because it's self-sustaining. But happens, what happens if it rains for a week straight? Mm -hmm. like, like it did it, yesterday. Right, exactly, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Then we're in trouble. We're after, it's not so self-sustaining. You're going to have to, you know, uh, fire up some of the uh, boilers or whatever it is. And so one of the things that, the, the, that you happens also is that every single level from the panel hitting the sun, you lose some efficiency. Then the efficiency goes down from the converter then convert it to the battery, then battery as well. So you're really losing a lot at every stage. Mm -hmm. So by using a capacitor, we're, we're making it significantly more efficient by getting rid of some of the steps. Mm -hmm. And so by going from the solar panel to the capacitor, getting rid of the battery, and the capacitor being a lot more efficient, it, it actually is, in some cases, 90% more mm. efficient than some batteries are. Mm. Um, and, and the battery technology is getting better. So in that case, maybe it's only 10, 20%. Uh, but the biggest thing is, is that you're saving uh, quite a bit of uh, maintenance costs as well. A battery after a certain life cycle you have to replace, and you can't just throw it in the dumpster. You have to actually dispose of it properly. Mm -hmm. Capacitor lasts significantly longer, and then you, when you dispose of it, it doesn't have that hazardous material. So that's mm -hmm. uh, uh, definitely good as well. And part of the thing is that in Hawaii, whether it gets hot or cold, they, luckily we're okay because you know our temperatures very similar year-round, but if you go to some places like Las Vegas, California, you know, Death Valley, if it gets too hot, the batteries will just go kaput, mm -hmm. where the capacitor does not. So the application I see is that once we get this technology into homes, right, then it could very well be that you could be off the grid, if done correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, and just to stick to street lights for a minute, mm. when you are installing a new street light, you that's not on the grid, right where the electric lines are running, you have to do something called trenching. And that means you dig a trench into which you place the electrical line. And that turns out to be very, very expensive. Let's say you're building a home in a rural area and you're a quarter mile away from the Hawaiian electric line that trenching and installation is going to cost you tens and tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. right there. Question, instead of doing that trenching, installing the line, and then paying the utility, why not spend that money instead on installing PV-powered mm -hmm. lights with the capacitors? And with regard to the capacitors, batteries are they have their life based on the up and down cycles, on fully charged, discharged, charged, discharged. They can only go through so many cycles and then they go kaput. But you are saying that the there's a correlation between 
capacitors and LEDs mm -hmm. in that they really don't care how many right. times they cycle. Right. So about, I, I believe uh, the, the latest study showed about 500,000 cycles. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that's pretty good when, when it mm -hmm. comes to mm -hmm. kind of the, the how long it will last. Yeah. And, and I think even looking at the LED lights, it's something where, and we talked about it before the break, it, it's going to be difficult for people to start stealing things too. I, mm -hmm. I think yeah. with the copper. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think, you, and you mentioned, the cost on every single level, you're using less energy, mm -hmm. you don't need to trench as much, depending on how we look at it, you don't need to put as much copper, so you save money there. Uh, it, it, it lasts longer, so you save on the maintenance fees. So I think that the return on investment is significant where it, it makes sense for cities, states, to start moving and installing LED lights as, as much as you can. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think there was a, a something about I think three quarters of the world's energy is for lighting. Mm -hmm. So that's where we could save the greatest amount of electricity. Mm -hmm. And then just to extend into the developing world for a minute, we still have in places like rural India, mm. literally hundreds of millions of people without electricity. Instead of going through all the expense of building a generator, then having to supply fuel to the generator, your basic need for electricity is light. So say kids can actually do their homework at night. Why not have this type of light in several places in the village? That's all you would need because some light is better than none. Mm, correct. And I, I think it has tremendous uh, developing world implications. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And going on the street lights, one of the benefits we've talked about it is what's called a foot candle, mm -hmm. which is right underneath it. And on high pressure sodium, like the orangey light, uh, it, it's it, it, one of those things where in the center versus on the out, outskirts. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is not visually appealing. Um, where LEDs, however, is a lot more uniform. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you're going to see these chunks of light and very dim on the edges. So that's one of the benefits of using LED is, again, not only are you saving a lot of money and mm -hmm. saving the environment, you're, you're also making things uh, more visually accommodating for people mm -hmm. driving, for people out, um, looking. And then you had talked about it, Mauna Kea, mm -hmm. the blue skies is an issue. And if the, the tele telescope can't see if the high pressure sodium is going up, mm -hmm. but LEDs, we can point them down. So we're, we're getting the best of both worlds. Yeah, and any of the viewers can experiment with this is drive down your conventional suburban street these days at night and look at the light pattern. You're going to see this narrow strip of orange and then this dull orange after that mm. and then another strip of orange and the strip of orange occurs at the nadir, the direct, the area directly under the street light. And our eyes much prefer uniformity. Mm. We like the same amount of light all over the place. And LEDs, because they can distribute evenly, they come much closer to uniformity than do our current lights. Plus, again, the as we've mentioned, the quality of the light. You can see that a blue is a blue, an orange is an orange, a green is a green, right. and so forth. And all at 50%. Uh, energy savings, right? It's it's just oh, and it's a lot safer. Too. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's why I mm -hmm. think that. And, I, and Hawaii oh. Energy has a plan for some businesses if they mm -hmm. are interested in moving LEDs, where Hawaii Energy will help subsidize and give yeah. incentives for the cost. So I think that's uh, very good news that Hawaii Energy is looking into us being more efficient with our energy. And you'll be glad to know that Hawaii Energy is one of the prime sponsors of Think Tech Hawaii. Oh, okay, that's yeah, good yeah, to yeah, know, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I just participated, I'm very, I'm very excited. They have these monster plugs, I don't know if you've heard of them. Hmm. And so what they do is, uh, for a limited time, I think that you can't get it for free now, but you can purchase them. You take these plugs and you put it to the wall and any you know, device that you plug it in. Mm -hmm. And then in my phone, I could tell how much energy that mm -hmm. particular device mm -hmm. is using. So what I did was I have a power strip with all my, you know, entertainment center and I mm -hmm. plug it in so mm -hmm. I can see. But the cool thing is, is that by the press of a button, I could turn everything off. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't draw any more uh, electricity. And then I could turn it on from here, right now, if I wanted to. Uh, so it's just fascinating where technology is moving in that direction where I anticipate 20, 30 years but houses are being built, that's probably built into it where anywhere you go, you can turn things on and off and you can even put rules 
so that if you forgot to turn something off and you leave, it'll automatically shut off mm -hmm. uh, with that monster plug that's put in. Mm -hmm. So uh, kudos to Hoi Energy doing it. I'm having a good time. They're having these games now, or mm -hmm. kind of uh, teaching us about how to use it. Um, and one of the things is, uh, going on electricity is, there's a lot of electronic devices that even when it's turned off but plugged in, saps energy out. Yeah. I actually did not know, and it's a lot more than I expected. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if I could check it now, having my computer plugged in, even if it's off, you know, is taking about $10, $15 a month, even when I'm not using it. Yeah. Now, those are called phantom loads. Mm, right, right. And this is something we're moving closer and closer. I'm trying to get it into the energy code, mm. where when things are off, they're really off. Because what we call entertainment centers in homes now, the TV, the video games, the Lord knows what all, consume now up to 20% of a home's mm. total energy use because everything else is getting so much more efficient. Right, right. So you're going in exactly the right, the right direction. Another virtue of the LEDs and the even distribution is the absence of glare. Mm. When you are looking directly at a street light, you're seeing a lot of that light there, and it's trying to decrease your pupil size, whereas you want the pupils to be big because this is nighttime. Mm. And right. with LEDs, you reduce a lot of that glare so that it's, uh, a, you have much better what's called visual acuity. Right. So yeah, I, I actually look forward to the day that more mm -hmm. people take it seriously, mm -hmm. especially maintenance folks, and they just start looking into changing uh, LED lights. And, and, and the heat, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's such a big thing for mm -hmm. me, is that you can have it on 10 hours, right after you turn it off and you touch it, it's not that yeah. hot. Yeah. Whereas a CFL halogen incandescent, you'll burn your hand. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, AC is such a huge cost to a lot of places, yep. and you can you know draw on down on that number as well. Now, what I, I like to tell the story of my going around and talking to different groups. And in one such group, Senator Willie Espero was there. And part of my lighting act was to turn on an incandescent lamp and then put an old, I say, oh, is that causing you glare? Let me get the glare away from you. And put an old running sock over it, preferably unwashed, <laughs> and then turn away and kind of forget about the lamp. And pretty soon I hear rustling. Ah, cha -cha 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 -cha. Ah, Mr. Wake, Mr. Wake. Yes. Uh, the sock, yes, it's there to protect you from the glare. It's, it's, it's smoking. <laughs> I say, how can it smoke? It's a light source, not a heat source. I don't care. The fire alarm's about to go off. Mm. So I did that, and the senator was sitting very nearby, and I have a heat gun. And I had the senator shoot the very top of the incandescent uh -huh. light 465 degrees. Wow. Holy cow. And then I asked the ladies in the audience, at what temperature do you cook cookies? about 325. Sure. So I say, you've got up to 10, 15 mini ovens all over your home because <laughs> Hawaii really need more heat in its home. Yeah, you no. know, and that's the concept of the easy bake oven. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My sister grew up with that. And, and it was for little girls that, or guys too who wanted to cook something, you know, when they were mm -hmm. very young. And it actually did cook something because they would use then can this light, you yeah. know, you shut yeah. it, yeah. and it, the heat was so hot, it would cook that cookie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You'd see laughs> <they come in. laughs> and that before you say, oh, well, these are so expensive. I was in a certain big box store just a couple of weeks ago, and LEDs were going, this is, I think it's 14 watts and 22 watts, something like that, for $6. This mm. is a screw-in yeah, LED. Yeah, cheaper. Hawaii Energy may be subsidizing that, but uh, there was no mention of Hawaii Energy mm. around that uh, display. And that's the thing. It's an investment that people need mm. to see. Uh, an investment where within six months, you're, everything else is profit. Yeah. So what I mean by that is you put in, let's just say, $10, but you're saving $5. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and if you're saving... In that case depends on how many, how much you put in, stuff like that. But that's the biggest thing about these LED lights. Mm -hmm. And we were just getting warmed up. I wanted to talk about all the other exciting <laughs> things that South Korea is doing. I mean, we can learn a lot from them, and of course, right, they can absolutely. learn from us. But uh, maybe in a few months we'll, we'll repeat this. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, so. But on that cheery note, we must bid you fond farewell. Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Have a pleasant evening.